and good day to my students in STS science technology and society subject so once again I'm Sean Xavier Alquilita uh, will be going to talk about the indigenous science and technology of the Philippines so our objectives is that at the end of this lesson the students should be, should be able to discuss the concept of indigenous science and explain or discuss the contribution of indigenous science in the development of science and technology in the Philippines. Okay, so indigenous knowledge system. So some examples of the indigenous knowledge that are taught and practiced by the indigenous people are uh, one of the ways is the predicting weather conditions and seasons using knowledge in uh, observing the animal movements the behavior and the celestial bodies um, you will use your five senses your sense of smell uh, and also your hair because your hair is very sensitive to humidity no? uh, later on I will show you how the people uh, in the past using uh, predicting weather conditions using our uh, using our own five senses no? and using the herbal medicine so you're talking here about uh, the picture here si Lola I, an old woman who is uh, healing a, a sick a sick person using Tai Hope, no? That is also another way of uh, healing the sick using the indigenous knowledge system. Uh, preserving of foods, the best example in Sagada, uh, the Igorots, uh, Itag, no? Uh, the the one of their famous uh, pork. Dish, uh, named Itag uh, classifying plants and animals into families and groups based on cultural properties and another thing is preserving and selecting good seeds for planting another thing here is the using indigenous technology in daily lives uh, building local irrigation systems uh, classifying different types of soil for planting based on cultural properties producing wines and juices from tropical fruits and keeping the custom of growing plants and vegetables in the in the yard um, i give you the best example here in this picture the Banawi rice terraces actually guys Banawi rice terraces is a man-made uh, it's a man-made structure which has been built 2,500 years ago mm. another thing here in Cebu uh, producing wines and juices from tropical fruits uh, that's what we call it the uh, uh, palm wine no? uh, in Visaya we called it as tuba so tuba is also known as uh, wine during the pre-colonial period but even until now some people uh, here in Cebu there's some people who also love to drink our uh, native wine mm. and also the keeping custom of growing plants and vegetables in the yard even in our own backyard we can also uh, plant some seeds vegetables that's also part of the practice of our pre-colonial ancestors long time ago Oh, 
se lo acostó. Hay un añilo y un añilo. Ah, bueno, seis quieren bot. Por eso está. Por eso está. Por eso está. Por eso está. Sa balinsama tiraman na nukwa Binabad kini Sa wano na wano Awal Sa mauna Ustuna. Okay, so in that video you can see the the art of preserving a pork, no, in in Sagada the igorots they call it the itag, no, and after that they're going to cook uh the water to to um I guess it's cook in the boiled water and then you're they're going to fry it and according to them it's very tasty. Uh, okay, so the next video we'll be talking about the the art of predicting weather using our own uh, ob using by means of our own observation. How to forecast weather without any instruments. You don't need a barometer to predict the weather. Careful observation can be just as effective. You will need cloud activity, signs of humidity, an observation of animals' actions, air conditions, and a presence of wind. Optional, sensitive hair. Step one, watch the clouds. If there is a cloud cover on a winter night, the next day will be warm because the clouds will trap the heat of the previous day. If clouds are moving in opposite directions to each other, expect bad weather. Dark clouds often indicate upcoming rain. Step two, look for signs of increasing humidity in curling leaves on trees and in front doors that stick due to swelling of the wood. If your hair is sensitive to changes in humidity, you have the natural gift of weather forecasting. Step three, watch animals. Birds often take flight when they expect fair weather. Cows like to lie down when a storm is coming, and ants build up their hills just before rain comes. Step four, check the air conditions. If the air smells like a compost pile, expect rain. Plants release their waste when the pressure drops, releasing the smell. Step five, check the wind. Strong winds indicate high pressure differences and may be a sign that a storm is coming. If your observations indicate a storm brewing, you should probably go run for shelter now. Did you know the mercury barometer, which measures air pressure, was invented in 1643 and its basic principles are still used in modern barometers? Okay, so the next one is the indigenous signs. So, 
indigenous science is part of the indigenous knowledge system or indigenous knowledge system practiced by different groups of people in early civilizations so it includes the arrays of knowledge expertise and practices and representations that guide human societies and also in their innumerable interactions with the natural milieu agriculture medicine naming and explaining um, the natural phenomena and strategies for coping with changing environments so indigenous science helps the people in understanding the natural environment and in coping with everyday life. So, how can we benefit from indigenous science? So, Indigenous science uses science process skills such as observing, uh, we use the five senses in observing things, comparing, we tend to compare, uh, and also to classify, we tend to measure things, we tend to solve problems, inferring, communicating, and even predicting. Now, indigenous science is guided by culture and community values uh, such as the following so the land is the source of life it is a precious gift from our creator and the earth is revered as the mother earth it is the origin of their identity as the people you know? especially those people are living in a in a remote communities uh, particularly to those who are uh, not only in the pre-colonial era but even but even today you know uh, we can we, there are still a culture or people are living independently from the uh, from the common from the common culture in the urban areas okay so Another thing here is that all living and non-living things are interconnected. So we are living in the same uh, ecosystem where we can where we can live harmoniously with nature as well as the living and non-living things interdependent with each other. So we there's still a close connection between the humans as well as nature. Human beings are stewards or trustee of the land. That is a biblical concept, no? That we are the stewards of God's creation and other natural resources. So they have a responsibility to preserve it. So that is why uh, being the stewards of God's creation, it is our responsibility to preserve human or mother nature. So nature is a friend to human beings. So it needs respect and proper care okay so another thing here is that indigenous science is composed of traditional knowledge practiced and valued by people and communities such as ethnobiology uh, ethnomedicine indigenous farming methods like the use of the carabao no and folk astronomy so using observation uh, of the celestial bodies so at the end so that is all for our topic so before we end up so there is a there are two questions here so what is your understanding of indigenous science could you give some examples that you practice indigenous science at home and number two how do society and culture 
influence the development of science and technology. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is Sean Xavier Alquilita. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube page for more videos on STS-1 subject. So uh, I'm Sean Xavier Alquilita. So thank you very much.